In your travels in the Middle East, do you, the average young person that you're interacting with, which is kind of the area that you're uniquely studying and engaged in, are they embracing Western ideas of consumerism or are they suspicious of them? Well, again, are they wearing Nike in the red, like everyone else. You know, they're wearing some are wearing Nike or they're wearing Nike ripoffs. You know, right. I think first of all we can't we can't make any kind of blanket generalizations, and I think even Western culture is Nike Western anymore. You know, or if Nikes are made in Indonesia and Malaysia, you know, just the brand is a Western brand, but it's been so taken over. But it is connected with the idea of commercialization, right. liberalism, free right. trade, those concepts. And, and, and those are things that used to be seen as Western, but yeah. now the biggest commercial in the Arab world are not Western companies. Mm. They're Saudi-owned companies like Rotana and these other companies who are much more, much more of a danger to local cultures than the American, uh, than the American companies are. And the thing is that the young people I work with and know, they're very sophisticated. They understand this. Mm. So they have no problem taking what they want. They have no problem playing heavy metal or mm. liking Britney Spears or what have you, but also being critical of, let's say, U.S. foreign policy and also understanding that their own governments are completely hypocritical. This is part of the good part of globalization, mm. where people are really picking and choosing and forming identities that are much closer to, let's say, our identities than other people in their own culture. Mm. You know, so that's they're, the they're OK thing. with the complexity of saying, I'll let me listen to Britney Spears yet be critical of America, absolutely. even though America produces Britney Spears. Sure, absolutely. And in some more you know, upsetting cases, you have young girls in Saudi Arabia who love Britney Spears. And when they're not listening to her, we listen to tapes of suicide bombers. You know, the last speeches so the, yeah. uh, before they kill themselves. That's a phenomenon of... Really? Uh, yeah. So they'll listen to Britney and then that. And, you know, and yet one is in one sense trying to be critical of the other thing they're listening to. They it, don't yes. see that as a, an intention? Well, th you know, if you're young and you're trying to find your own identity and you're living in an incredibly dysfunctional culture, then it's not surprising that you would reach out in so many directions. And probably given what's happening with Brittany <laughs> the last yeah. few months, putting her next to other people who also are clearly, you know, In one sense, maybe she's suicidal. Who knows? Uh, I don't want to, let, let's not go there, but certainly, okay. you know, you can see that these people are trying, the young people are trying to reach out in so many directions, and they're trying to see who's going to grab back at them and who's going to make the connection. And the Internet is doing that, of course, in amazing ways, both for good right. and for bad. You, look, we're, I'm going to touch on music in a little bit, but uh, you talk about this concept of culture jamming. Explain that for our viewers. What do you mean by that? Well, certainly culture jamming for me was very influenced by you know, Canadian magazine Adbusters. And, and for them, culture jamming was a way of using cultural messages to jam subversive. Anti-consumerism. Right. Into, buy nothing right. day. So, but even that, you know, you take billboards, the famous kind of guerrilla art. You take, you know, the billboard of the Marlboro Man and you'd paint the skull and bones over it. You use jam messages in. But I was a musician. I still am a musician. And when I heard culture jamming, and actually mm -hmm. the first time I heard it was in Naomi Klein's first book, and no logo. Like, well, that sounds cool. I'm a musician. I love to jam. Oh. And so my way of taking it was say, well, what happens if you do it positively? If you bring people together from different cultures and you jam, you, like you a jam, improvise. Like a, a jam session, like a, a musician. A jam okay. and, 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 you know, a lot of jam sessions, anyone who's been to a bar, you know, with a jam session, 80% of the time it's really bad and you want to walk out. Right. But there's that 20% of the time that you produce something really unique and really new that stands the test of time and communicates something really powerful. And for me, that was always my goal as a musician and now doing kind of bringing people from different cultures together. So what would culture jamming look like in, across religious spectrums? Well, I, I say I'm, I'm doing a show, for example, in, in New York in, in a few weeks uh, at this big club, SOB's, famous club, and we're going to be doing a concert in Morocco later this summer where we're bringing together like a super group of a lot of the artists I work with who are also activists. You know, mm. these metalheads and other musicians, they have PhDs from the Sorbonne. They're doctors. Mm. They have MBAs. They're very sophisticated. So imagine putting together on the same stage, you know, a British drummer and an Iranian guitar player and a, a Jewish-American guitar player and a Lebanese guy and an Israeli guy, and you put mm. all of this together, not only are they doing music that's just incredibly innovative and really good if they're good musicians, the very fact that they're together talking together tells everyone out there that, hey, you can, we can all be talking together. Is it just modeling? Is that all that, that really is? No, because I think when, you're, when, when they actually speak and talk together, they start figuring out ways how to break down the barriers and their own society. Just to give you one example, mm -hmm. probably the biggest metal band in the Middle East, the most popular, is an Israeli metal band called Orphan Land. 
And, and if you go to any of the MySpace sites of Arab or, or Iranian metal bands, you'll see links to them. Hmm. And even Arabs from Saudi Arabia will tattoo Orphan Land wow. to their bodies. Now, this is an Israeli band. Right. No one can believe that until you go to their website right. and actually see the tattoos. Huh. So, so, and these metalheads will come to Germany, where Orphan Land might play, or Istanbul, and they'll meet them, and they'll talk, and they'll create friendships. Hmm. This is them breaking down stereotypes, let's say, in Saudi Arabia, which is traditionally a very anti-Semitic culture. And you have a whole new generation of Saudis, you know, certainly of a certain class and background, but still very important that no longer buys into the, the, to the traditional Saudi But, discourse. I mean, if it is as pervasive as you say it is that, let's say, these bands are attracting young Muslims that are able to reach out and tattoo Israeli bands, how come the, the most prevalent people that are still involved in these terrorist organizations are 18 to 22 years old? Well, you know, you have people who are involved in the terrorist organizations doing some of the terrorism that are that age. The leadership is much older. A lot of it is economic. I mean, a lot of the young people who are involved at that level are coming out of poor backgrounds like in Morocco, the slums in Morocco, or in Palestine. They're coming out of a place of utter despair. And this is one way, with the way the ideology is pumped into them constantly, of gaining some sense of self-worth. It's a totally dysfunctional mm -hmm. and bad way, mm -hmm. but psychologically you can understand it. What's more interesting is the older generation that's Western trained, like some of the people in 9-11, mm -hmm. who, who live in the West and still reject it. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's not exactly as strange as you think, because mm -hmm. you have, you know, Patricia Hearst, you know, you have the Red Brigades. There's a long mm -hmm. history of people who are even in the West rejecting it violently. In the mm -hmm. same way there are people in the Muslim world who reject it violently. Mm -hmm.